Hey, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. This lesson is the B section of the classic tune Misty as a chord melody arrangement on my YouTube channel. In my lessons, I've done a ton of uh, tutorials on how to do chord melody arranging and I have a specific kind of approach to it and a little bit of a system and a language that I've created for it for myself. And uh, I love it. So I've done a lot of lessons on it. And to do that, I've been uh, teaching the concepts so you can work on it yourself and learn how to do it but I was teaching many lessons that were just portions of songs, just the beginning of something, the A section. Like Misty, I did a video on just the A section of Misty, and there's a link to that video in the description. And I've been getting a lot of requests to finish some of these songs off to give you the rest of the arrangement of it. So we're gonna arrange the B section of Misty in this video so you have the whole thing. And a lot of these arrangements are in my solo guitar arrangement PDF. Uh, it's a free download that you can get. There's a link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon to get it. But don't just get the PDF and start working on it because the way that I do this is I provide kind of the language for what chord shapes we can use uh, when making chord melodies. And then you have to kind of make it more musical for yourself, make it easier on yourself, choose what you play, what you don't play uh, to kind of adapt the arrangement. Um, and I'll, of course, walk you through how that works right now. So let's talk about the B section of Misty. And again, the A section is in, uh, uh, there's a link to that whole video in the description, but the A section goes like this. A couple adaptations I did there that are slightly different from the sheet music that I have in the PDF, and that's what I'm talking about, how you can do kind of your own adaptations. I didn't play some of the chords to make it smoother, or I made slightly different harmonizations in some places. That's all stuff that you know we want to internalize over time. Let's go to the B section, though. The first thing we want to do is look at how we land on E flat at the end of the second A section. And the, the E flat I want to land on is this. Just a, the, the root of the chord as the melody, and then harmonizing with these two notes down here because there's two beats after that that goes to A minor six, and we want to play that, but we, we want to keep this ringing. So we got uh, this end of the A section. Okay, and ideally we keep that note ringing and that's the difficult part, so. There we go, then it's still ringing. We play that A minor six. Then we can go into the melody for the B section. And in the melody, there's a break, there's a rest on beat one. So you might as well hit the root to kind of get the root sound because the chord melody uh, chords, the first chord melody chord I'm gonna have us play is this. And it does not, it does not have the root on the bottom. Okay, but the melody is, the way I think of it is um, an E flat major pentatonic scale, the chord is E flat major six, or you can think of it as just E flat major or E flat major seven, and it's going one, two, three, five, six, and uh, just going through E flat major pentatonic. So here's how I would harmonize that. I would use this shape, and this shape is great for playing the root on the second string of a major six chord, because we have the six as the lowest note and then the third, and those are the notes we need. This happens to be the five, which is great that it's in there, but it's not necessary to have it in there. So even though this is a C minor seven chord shape, um, it harmonizes beautifully for this E flat major six, okay? Now, because the root is on top, the melody moves up a whole step and we can replace the root because it's not messing with the six or the three. It's not messing with the guide tones or the quality of it, so. Okay, so we're moving to that. The next note is G. We're gonna move, play this root position, E flat major seven. Yes, the chord, it, at least in the lead sheet I'm looking at, which is on the realbook.site uh, website, which I did a video on recently just about how it exists and how it's cool. Um, I'm looking at it and it says E flat six, but of course E flat six could be E flat major seven. It could be, you know, it's just a major chord. So we can use a major seven shape or a, ma a major six shape or whatever. Okay, so we have one, two, three of the scale. Then it goes to five of the scale. And here's the shape that I kind of first think of for that. This is a major six, nine chord. Third, six, ninth, fifth on the top as the melody. Now this is one of those moments where I might not play this in the final arrangement. And uh, that's totally fine. 
Okay. And then we jump to E flat uh, major six. This is the six on the top, so I'm just playing an E flat triad and then the six. Okay, so that is, we have five notes total for this little, for this measure. Sounds cool, right? Just to show you the arrangement approach to make it easier for myself. I might do that to this note here instead of jumping to this shape. Now I like to know the shape is there. It's what I call the clunky version. What's the shape that would harmonize this that keeps the guide tones on every single note? However, uh, if I can do, great. You know, that's where I'm gonna make that choice to make it easier on myself. That feels good. But the arrangement's gonna show this. Okay. Now we're gonna go to B flat minor seven. And I do this B flat minor 11 shape. One, 11, flat seven, flat three. Okay, and if you uh, know the words, then uh, it's kind of nice. You can say that you're leading me on. It's nice to know the words, to, it helps me know where I am in the tune. Okay, now, just a little side note tip, when I'm playing with this kind of thing, I'm thinking, well, this sounds nice, but is there anything else I can do with it? I'm just starting to experiment with inner moving lines. So you need that. I might play this B flat minor triad. And then move other notes around while the melody of course needs to just be what it is. So just a little throwing that in there because I'm kind of playing with, can I move, can I have inner moving lines happening in some places? But here's what I would just say is the arrangement for now. Okay, then we're gonna go to just the bottom three notes of this um, diminished chord shape. We're gonna move that, play the bottom three notes of that, and then the melody is Now the official chord shapes for this, because this is an E flat dominant seven flat nine chord. Here's the root. Okay, I'm thinking of a diminished shape off the five of the root. This is a just, typical kind of traditional jazz guitar thing to do. You think of, or in any instrument really, but you're thinking of the diminished structure off of the five, like as the lowest note, and then you can move that same structure to off of the three as the lowest note. You can move that same structure, I'll do it here, to off the flat nine. This diminished shape is pretty cool. Check out my video on diminished chords. Um, it, just, it explains some of that. So here we are with this harmony. And then the melody goes, Okay, but the chord is E flat seven. So technically to harmonize it, I'm gonna do this. That's yeah, pretty clunky though. That's why this is the clunky version. So I might try to bar that and go, maybe I'll go. And then we'll jump ahead one note and then we'll come back. We're resolving to A flat major seven or A flat major six. In this case, this is an A flat major six shape. Okay, so we have, but I don't like having to bar that. So I'm actually going to skip that note or not skip the note, but skip harmonizing it. That feels good. Let's review where we're at. I'll do the full version. And then Now you can choose if you do this kind of thing, da, 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 and you play the whole chord, or you you play the, the chord, you let it ring, and you play the melody. That's all on you. That's totally your choice. I want you to even make those choices in the moment so you're not just b totally by rote memorization playing exactly an arrangement. You might as well, uh, you know, you could, you absolutely could, but that's a little more like uh, the approach of classical guitar. And with this, I hope, you can be feeling like some of it is is your you can take ownership over some of it. Now we have an A flat major pentatonic scale. Okay, that's the melody, and this is an A flat chord, A flat six or A flat six nine or A flat major seven. That's what the melody does next. And the same shape, the C minor seven uh, tip. What usually we think of a C minor seven root position is a fantastic chord shape to harmonize the A flat because this is the third and then this is the seven and then this is the nine and 
the melody is the five. Okay, so five can move. That's not taking away from the guide tones. Great. Okay. So I'm going to do that. Five, six, one. Hey, well, this is the language part. This shape right here, harmonizing an A, ma a flat major chord is the exact same thing we did. Here's A flat major of the root. And then the root is the melody. So I'm using this shape. Well, that's exactly what we did at the beginning of the B section where E flat was the root and E flat was the melody. And I played that same shape. E flat's the melody, there's the shape. A flat is the melody of an A flat major chord, there's the shape. Okay, if you're confused by that, don't worry. Learn what you can from this. Take little bits of it. Get the PDF, work on that. Um, okay, so now we're going. One, two, or sorry, five, six, one, two, five, six, one, two. When I say that, I'm saying the, the numbers of the A flat major pentatonic scale. Okay, then we're just gonna go to an A flat major seven because the third is the melody. Oh, that's so cool. Now, this is like, I would just play with this. What if you're on this chord? You want to just jam with A flat major pentatonic on an A flat major chord. Right? Uh, whatever, just kind of grooving with it a little bit to feel like I'm on one chord doing this chord melody thing with those particular shapes that kind of feel smooth. So we're here. Third is the melody, C natural note, A flat is the root of the chord, and we're gonna go to a D note for the melody, and the chord is going to be A minor 11. Cool. It's officially A minor 11, because the melody is the 11. Here's the shape. If I'm playing that melody note, uh, uh, an 11 of a minor chord on the top string, I always play this shape. Not that there aren't other options, but like the first thing I think of is this. It just, it's a go-to option. I don't have to think about it. I just do it. Okay, because we have the flat three, we have the seven. Here's the root. And the top is the uh, the 11. Okay, now the melody goes. This is the shape. And if you've seen any of my other chord melody videos, I've talked about this shape a bunch. This shape is useful for many, many things. We've already used it once as the uh, major six nine chord with five on the top. Well, this is A minor 11 with the flat three on the top. So now that's exactly a spot also that I might ignore later. Do I want to jump over there to that or do I want to do this? The notes right here also. So there's kind of a version of this where I just want to be aware of all the options and then there's kind of a like, if the note is available in the position I'm already in, you grab it and it just makes everything like twice, three times, four times as easy and sounds great. And you can start breaking quote unquote rules that I've made. They're just guidelines. They're just ways to get into the language of it. You can start like getting, if the third disappears, who cares, right? Do something that sounds good to you. It's all, there's kind of a study element and then a like let go and make music element. So good. And then we're going to D7, which is nice. It just, we just have that voicing go down there. I love that. It's just a two five motion. A minor 11 to D7, one note changes. Cool, and the melody is, or that's what we're harmonizing and that's all D7. So you can go, that's the flat seven of D7. And then you have to do a sharp nine chord. Awesome, D7 with the sharp nine, that top note up there. Very spicy note, sharp nine. We have flat seven, three, five, sharp nine. Then root, then flat seven. Okay, now do you wanna go play that flat seven or not? That's where you can decide later. So here's the clunky version on the D7 chord, the third to last measure of the B section of Misty. Or oh, sorry. Okay. That's what I'm 
lots of moving around, but cool to know that that's there because now you can just go, you can just use that pinky again. Or if you want a bigger sound, use a big D7 chord. You hear how the, the kind of core of the language though sets us up to make those other choices? Okay, now we're on G minor. We're on this little turnaround, four chord turnaround, the last two measures of the B section. We just have this note ringing. So we need to play it in a place where we can try to have some motion underneath while it rings. And then for the F7, F minor seven chord, I just let go of the melody, but at least you get it like G minor, C7 while that's ringing, very tasteful to be able to get that going. Technique wise, very difficult. And then, and that's the whole B section. And it goes back to the, the other section that we've covered before and all this is in the PDF. So let's do a big review. Okay, so we end off the uh, A section. There's our A flat minor six, awesome. And then we have, doing that much obviously didn't i was looking at um just the lead sheet of it while teaching it, just like, okay, this note is here and this chord is there and here's the arrangement. Took me about, I don't know, half an hour to play with that to be like, cool, here it is and practice it a little bit and say, I'm gonna show you this now. And the reason, you know, it's not reinventing the wheel every time. The reason I'm able to really do that with any tune and start to get it to a place where um, like, this feels like a legit arrangement, make a couple tweaks to make it easier to play, more expressive, do a little practicing on it. It can be a very quick process when we understand uh, the language of it, which is what I've been teaching in this whole series. I'll link to the playlist of just chord melody playlist also if you want to dive deep into that. And coming up very soon, if you're watching this video, uh, roughly when it's come when it comes out, uh, I'll be opening up my uh, free chord melody workshop that goes super deep on kind of drills to actually memorize that kind of stuff. And after that, I'm opening up my chord melody magic course again it's been closed for a while uh but that is where we go all the way deep on figuring out the language all the drills being able to just do it on any lead sheet like i was doing kind of for this lesson but hopefully at least you're interested in just having that b section down and playing with misty because it's such a wonderful tune and you can get that pdf for free uh, with the link in the top of the description and when you download any of my stuff it all, you also get onto my email list and i send out my um free lesson every week to the email list. And of course you can unsubscribe super easily with one click if you don't want to be on that, no problem. Uh, but if you're on my email list, I'll send out announcements about the Chord Melody Workshop and about the opening of Chord Melody Magic that's coming up again in March soon. So if you're interested in those things, you'll get notified. That's it. I do a lesson every week on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.